No worries. Do you want to finish that coffee? Like, I mean, I feel like I'm now you good. No, good to... mate, I'm good. Just a little pick me up. Okay, good stuff. Um, speaking of pick me ups, um, I watched the film again last night with a uh, stopwatch, and I counted a 21 minute un unbroken. Uh, so yeah, how many times did I mean? Obviously, like yeah, okay. So you clearly had transitions in and all the rest of it, but like obviously edited out of it. How many times did you have to do? like reshoots it not reshoots but like kind of like how many times were there fuck ups essentially yeah yeah well it really depended on the you know what it was we were doing i think the it, the the longest um section of that was probably three or four minutes uh, of you know footage but the the most amount of times we had to do one part of that i think was it was like 14 or 15 times when i think it was around the train and part of the fight sequence when we just the timing with the stunt team you know was it was tough because we had the the train on a gimbal and it was moving and everyone was moving and it was just trying to get that timing right it was we had to do that one over and over and over again and like, I mean, are you like, I mean, I've always wondered about this because like, are you like checking the gate as you're going along thinking, right, okay, we've got that. Or do you like, is it just all done in post or how does it work? Like, Oh, no, we, you have to decide, you know, very much ahead of time what you plan on doing and you, you can adapt as you go, but you, we can't move on until the, you know, those pieces match. So you're, you're, once you you have to know where it is you want to stop and where you want to start the next piece. So you shoot that piece and you you lead into the next part. And so you have to be happy with that and maybe give yourself an alt, you know, like maybe a different line here or a different move. But then once you move on, that's done and dusted. It's 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 gone. And now you move on to the next piece and you have to, it has to match what you shot before so that it's seamless all the way through. And the very challenging part about this was we shot out of order. So oh, wow. it wasn't one of those, like the first movie we shot in sequence and we would make, you know, some changes as we went. Cause we're like, Oh, let's, we can make this better. But this one, we shot the ending first. So we, we had to make decisions very early about where was Tyler Wright going to be injured? What was he going to be, you know, what weapons did he have left? All, all these, you know, kind of boringly technical things. Oh, we yeah. had to make those decisions early because we were totally out of order. Wow. I mean, was that because of, you know, you only had time with the gimbal at that time or was that like start the most difficult thing first and work back or? It was a little bit of all the above because we we started with the train because it was so technically complicated. So many moving parts, like landing a helicopter on a moving train and having Chris Hemsworth on the front of the train with, you know, with the helicopter, all those things had to to be sorted out and rehearsed, rehearsed. So we spent three weeks on location before we you know rolled a uh, camera with all the crew and the cast. So rather than rehearse all that stuff, go away and do something else, come back and, and everyone's out of the groove. We stayed with that and just rolled right into filming. And because of that, those seven days on the train were seamless and everything went fantastically. It just meant, it just meant the rest of it was hard because we had just shot the ending. Now we got to go back to the beginning and make sure yeah. we don't mess it up, you know, and change our, our ending. How oh, actually you've you've kind of you've kind of asked it there, but I mean, all, all told, how long did that twenty-one minute block take to film? Twenty-nine days of shooting. Holy shit! Yeah, that, wow. that's like more than a lot of movies have, like to to make you know an entire movie do that for yeah. one sequence. Yeah. And actually, on that, I mean, you know, obviously this is your second time, second time, you know, directing a feature and all the rest of it. I mean. Now that you're kind, of, now that you're done, now that you're promoting and all the rest of it, I mean, are there things in this film that you definitely wouldn't do again? And I don't mean it in the sense of like, oh, it was so challenging or whatever, but I mean in terms of like, I don't know, like, is in like if it was so, I don't know, yeah, just is is there things that you've done in this that you definitely wouldn't do again? And I don't mean in the sense of repeating yourself. I mean in the sense of it was yeah, too difficult. Yeah, 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 too difficult or like not the best way to do something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I would prefer not to, if, we, if I had ever do a one again, I'd prefer not to shoot it out of order. That was, that was not only difficult technically, but just the mind, yeah, the puzzle that would just stay on my mind throughout because it, you know, you had to try to keep all that together and not lose the momentum, but shoot different things in between. It was really, really tough because it's, it's more, for me, it's a lot easier to finish that sequence and put it to rest and then go yeah. on with the next Then it is to like, all right, we've got the ending, but now I got to unplug from that, do a whole different, you know, dramatic scene for two weeks, shoot a different fight and then come back to it and go, wait, where are we? And it's just a, 
it, that was super challenging. I'd prefer not to do that again. I mean, we, we did it. We proved it's possible, but that was not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Did, I mean, I know Chris Hemsworth, you know, you can see that he do, does do a lot of his own kind of stunts in this. And, you know, I know, like, I, I like David Leach kind of talked about this, that, you know, the idea of using um, blanks versus using like the CGI to show the muzzle flash and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, and that I know certain actors almost have it written into their contract that they don't want, uh, they don't want blanks that they want to use the, the CGI muzzle flash. I'm wondering, I mean, for you, for somebody, I mean, obviously you've worked as like, you know, second unit director, you've done, you've been a stuntman for 20 years. I mean, what do you kind of, take on what, what's your take i suppose in this whole thing versus you know uh putting the muscle flash in post or using a blank and kind of capturing the flash on camera what do you i mean what do you make of it like that's it's all situational i think it, safety is the most important thing because we're not you know at the end of the day everyone wants to go home to their families right like huh. you, you need to be safe and we're doing some very dangerous things and every anytime you involve a firearm it's inherently dangerous potentially so you have to put in place safety procedures and, and uh, systems that you always follow. Uh, and you just redundancy is set into those systems so that you, you the accidents are unable to happen. But there's times when, you know, it's, it depends. Like there's times when you're unable to use the, the you know, blank firing pistols because it's too dangerous. Like any, anytime you're in close quarters combat, you, you can't use them because you don't want any projectile potentially to come out, even though they have amazing you know, versions of weapons where they call solid plugged, where you can get, you know, the the shell ejecting and the slide moving, which is easier for visual effects, but nothing comes out because the barrel is just welded shut. There's no way anything can escape. So you get a solid plug. Those are great. But if but if in the choreography you have to hit people with the gun or it falls, then you're kind of forced into using a rubber gun. And now, you know, then it's just that's the best tool. Because now you can use muzzle flashes. You can add the slide moving and the shell ejecting in post now because CG is so good. But then, you know, if you're outdoors and you, you're at a distance and you're, you're safe and you, you have like, you know, it's one person on camera and you're not close to shooting any crew members or cast, I think it's great to get the real in-camera feeling of, of a gun being shot because there's something about that that it's really difficult to capture both the not just the feeling of the the weapon and it's the discharge of that explosive you know bullet but it's the the reaction and the feeling and the absorption of that energy from the actor like there's a just a, yeah. a visceral reaction that they have when they're firing a, a weapon for real that is hard to replicate so i think there's a time and a place for each one of those but fundamentally safety first no matter what so ultimately that that drives all of my decisions yeah. I mean, I always go back, like the thing I'd always kind of reference in that is like, you know, heat, for example, like the bit of the, the you know, the LA shoot, the shootout thing, like the noise of it was like yeah. bouncing off the thing. Like it makes sense. But yeah, I take your point about like, you know, you have to use rubbers or whatever, well, not rubbers, but you know what I mean? The rubber guns. Yeah. yeah. Um, It's kind of, I, I mean, what I would kind of, I mean, we'll send this out before it, um, before the, or after the film airs, but I mean, it's kind of set up for a third one pretty much by the end of the film. I, yeah. Have you signed up for a third one? Have you? Uh, you in no, there, there's no, you know, there's nothing official for a third movie. Although the story does, what we tried to do with the second film is is wrap up the emotional, uh, you know, through line of the first movie and the second one, so that by the end of this film, that chapter of Tyler's story is complete and he's free to either hang up the, you know, hang up the guns or go on to the next movie and, and you know, free of that that past and allow you know a new emotional story to emerge so it, it hasn't been you know solidified i think we're waiting to see how people react to the second film but should you know should it happen should the people enjoy the second one and there's a potential for a third as a fan i would love to see it come come to pass mm. um what films were you watching or do you watch films during pre-production to kind of give you a bit of creative kind of zest uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I love action movies and, I, you know, I, you're trying, or I'm trying to, to watch as many as I can to uh, truthfully, yes, take some inspiration, but mostly to make sure that you're not being derivative. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you want to keep current. So you're not like, I got this great idea. And I mean, there, I was super concerned because not even, it wasn't out, but keeping up with current events and knowing that mission impossible was doing a train sequence. I was like, Oh gosh, like we, we, we can't do this train sequence. And then everyone's no, just, you know, calm down. It's not going to be the same because you could give 10 directors 
you know, the same script, same train sequence, and it'll be 10 different ways. So it'll have its own point of view. But yeah, you're con I'm constantly thinking about that because you don't want to seem derivative. You don't want to, you want to try to get to something first, you know, if you can. Yeah, yeah. Who, who knows? I, I'm excited to see what they do with the train sequence. You know, ours is going to come out before them. Haha. -ha. But we'll see. You know, it's, it's just <laughs> my version of a train action sequence. And I think that's what makes this art form so interesting. It's not like it's not to me. It's not better or worse. It's just different because each director yeah. has a different point of view. Yeah, definitely. Like, I think um, in the case of I mean, it, it's funny you say that the train sequence, because that's where I got the idea for that question about not doing something after because Macquarie had said if I'd known now what I know then, I never would have done that train sequence because he found it so fucking difficult. So that's interesting. Oh, it, it was super difficult. Um, and yeah, no, I, I would not shoot a train sequence again. I mean, the, we, I mean, but that's me. I mean, if you ask the, the team who had to like who was <laughs> all of the technical and like logistical stuff, they probably would never do it again. But I, from a creative side and me running around the train and shooting stuff, it was, it was super exciting. I, I love being out in the middle of it, like uh, in amongst it. Maybe that's from my stunt background, but I, I love that kind of stuff. Actually on that, I mean, were you ever tempted to kind of, I don't know, put on the harness again and throw yourself in for a scene or was it just, you were too busy behind the camera? Uh, yes to both i mean i i yes it, there's always the the bug of you know getting back in there and shaking it up a little bit dust off the old knee pads but there i was too busy too many other things that were more important than you know servicing my ego is like get back in there why does it make the movie better probably not it's just give, you know you can scratch that itch a different way and for me it was like being on camera and trying to find the most dynamic shots that would capture the action with other people probably way more qualified and talented than me doing the stunts. So, you know, that, that was for me being able to strap myself to the, you know, the hood of a, a moving vehicle or to run across the train. That was enough of the being close to the action for me to, to, to satisfy that need. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, like the, the, the stunt performers that you had, I mean, I recognized a few kind of familiar faces, but I'm wondering, I mean, you know, now that, you know, we were kind of talking about CGI before and how it's reached such a point now that, you know, you can safely replicate a lot of things. I mean, do you see a point, you know, I don't know, five years, 10 years, 25 years, where the stunt person will no longer be necessary and that you'll be, you know, computer generated graphics will be so good that it will be indistinguishable? I think there's potential for that time to come. Yeah, we, we're just not there yet. I think there's yeah. there's still a visceral difference. And for whatever reason, we can tell as humans, you know, what's kind of real and what's not. Now, I think the beauty of CG is there's a lot of stories that we can tell now that 15 years ago you were unable to do. Like the Marvel Universe would not have been possible, say, 20, 30 years ago, not at the level of entertainment that it is now. Yeah. Um and I think that's amazing. It opens up so many avenues of entertainment and stories to be told. And I think that there's a the flip side of that is because you have so much of that in the marketplace, people get a little oversaturated with that. And kind of there's a, a throwback, if you will, or a nostalgic feeling to action that is real with real people and the adrenaline level that you can achieve while seeing a fellow human being put themselves in danger. I think it's hard to match with the digital character. So still, I think... I think uh, as long as, you know, there's humans watching stories on screen about other humans, there will be a place for physical action. But I, I'd have to say, I mean, you have to, the speed with which technology is advancing, you'd yeah. have to, yes, at some point, what, you know, whether it is 10, 15, 20 years, at some point, I imagine that it'll be, you know, very difficult to tell the difference between what's real and what's not. Yeah. Um, final question. If you were to queue up, let's say, three films next to extraction two like you're doing like a kind of like a, a marathon or whatever and not extraction one what other films would you put next to it uh to watch as a fan or what in yeah. what context oh just as a guess, fan. like if you were like a little mini festival i guess oh okay mini festival uh i would throw up um probably jackie chan's um legend of drunken master love that yeah. movie mm -hmm. i would throw up uh rambo first blood part two very good. Yeah. And uh I probably die hard. I put Die I put, Hard. Die Hard. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's I yeah, no, it's 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 a classic. Yeah, you can't you can't argue with it. Yeah, that's fair. It's just I just the the way yeah, McTiernan like, you know moved the camera and told the story. I I don't know. I think there's there's a really and it it became, you know, 
iconic because everyone was like, oh, it's die hard, but on a tr- you know, on a bus. It's speed, right? Yeah. It, it became like this this iconic action movie that you when you watch it again, there's a reason why. Like it, it's it's so good. It, it not only the, the action is exciting, but it's rooted in this character's emotional journey to like reconnect with his wife. And that's I think that's why people you know, it's the everyman struggling to to achieve something, you know that we all kind of achieve or are striving to achieve, which is connection with someone. And he just has to overcome ridiculous obstacles and odds to get there. But I think mm-hmm. that's why it's relatable. So I, yeah, it's definitely up there. No, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't argue with it. That's no, that's, that's a good choice. Okay. I got to leave it there. Sam, thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks, man.